Well hello and thank you so much for coming to my channel. My name's Lyndon and in today's video I want to go through a whole chord chart and decode everything that we see in there. And the chord chart is going to be for the fantastic jazz standard Blue Bossa. Now the reason that I'm doing this is that when I first started looking at chord charts I just found them totally intimidating and I felt kind of you know useless that I couldn't understand them better uh, than, than I did. And it took me a really long time to get the hang of them and to understand these concepts. But now I'm on the other side of that. I can explain this to people really straightforwardly and everybody gets it. And I'd love to be able to share that with you and stop other people, you, from struggling with chord charts in the way that I did. Because actually it's reasonably straightforward if you know your scales. You do need to know your scales for this. So major scales and minor scales are going to be absolutely essential in being able to do what I'm going to suggest that we do today. And also some other things that you need to know about are going to be major 2-5-1s and minor 2-5-1s and the harmonic minor scale uh, as well as major and minor scales. So if you're not comfortable with those things just yet that's fine but go back to my channel and have a look or I'll put some links in the description below. At especially major 2-5-1s and minor 2-5-1s, harmonic minors, those are the big ones. Now I keep gesturing over to here because I've got a chord chart here for Blue Bossa and uh, uh, I'm going to go through each section and explain exactly what it's about. So, uh, so let's have a look. So if we have a look at Blue Bossa then the first two chords that we're going to see over the first four bars are A minor 7 and D minor 7. Now in the normal scheme of things if I saw uh, an A minor 7 you probably might think well Dorian is a good choice and it is, it is a good choice. But really what we want to think about here is the context in which you find it or what neighbouring chords it has next to it. And in this instance because it has a D minor 7 next to it, you could think of the D minor 7 as the second mode of C major. Um, and then if that was the case, then A minor could be the relative minor of C. And this is kind of useful because when I look at those two chords, A minor and D7, both of these chords are going to come from the same place, which is C major. Yes, get in. Uh, so that's the way that I'm going to treat it. Now I'm not saying that this is the only way. There's loads, there's a, probably an infinite amount of ways that you could interpret these chords. This is what we could do for a start. So it's quite a good start. So the first thing that I want to do is to work out what the chord tones would be. And the chord tones are A, C, E, G and B. And that would be the root 3, 5, 7 and 9. And for D minor, it would be D, F, A, C, and E. So those are the chord tones. So how does that help me? Well, I could make a really lovely solo just by doing that. And what I've got here, as you can see, is I've got my app called iReal Pro, which is where this chord chart came from. Fantastic app, iReal Pro. Thank you so much for creating it. And you should go out and buy this because it's amazing. And what I can do is that I can loop these four bars, which is very, very useful because I just want to practice these first four bars. So if I grab my beautiful saxophone, uh, and all I'm gonna do is I'm just going to play the, the root of each chord. Uh, so just to be dead specific, I'm going to play A and then D. So just the root of each one, then the root and third, then the root third and fifth, then the root third, fifth and seventh, and then the root third, fifth, seventh, ninth. And then I'll probably do that backwards. Uh, so again, to be specific, nine, seven, five, three roots. That's going to already sound really, really, really nice. And then I'm going to mess around with the chord tones just a little bit, but not too much. So have a listen to see how nice this sounds.
lovely and you could practice like this for <laughs> however long you wanted minutes hours and it just feels really 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 nice i love this way of practicing because you are improvising you're developing your improvisational skills you're also following the chord uh, tones which is super important I cannot see a possible downside and when you do it with a backing track like this it sounds lovely so like I said there's loads of things that I could do over here but that's a really good start so moving on to the next four bars and what I'm looking for here is anything that I can recognize as a structure and if and as you can see what we've got here is Never mind about the B and the E and the A for a second. Let's just have a look at the type of chord. This is the significant thing. And here I've got a circle with a slash through it and a seven, followed by some sort of dominant seven with a, a, a chord extension. And that is my cue to recognize that it's a minor two, five, one. And if I know that, then I know what I'm gonna play. If I recognize it, that's the most important thing, that I just recognize that structure. And that is followed by this A minor. And now I can be even more sure because B is the second note of A minor and E is the fifth note of A minor, so that's definitely, definitely a minor 2-5-1. Now there are loads of things that I could potentially play over this. Uh, again, an infinite, probably infinite amount of things. But what I'm going to choose to do is a really, really straightforward approach, which, by the way, sounds absolutely gorgeous, and that is to play a harmonic minor over the whole thing. Um, and the harmonic minor that I'm going to choose is a harmonic minor and that will fit um, absolutely beautifully and sound gorgeous. So the notes of a harmonic minor are A, B, C, D, E, F, G sharp and A and I'm just going to play that scale over the whole thing. Seriously, it's going to sound gorgeous and once again, all of you jazz heads out there, uh, you could play altered scales, Locrian scales, you could play melodic minors, that you could play diminished scales. There's loads of things that you could do, but I just want to keep it nice and straightforward uh, for the time being and just do this, harmonic minor over all. So again, what I'm going to do is go to my app, I'm going to loop, whoops, I'm going to loop these four bars, hopefully, there you go. I'm going to loop these four bars and isolate this section and I'm just going to play my scale. So again, the first time I'm going to play the scale very straight up and down and then I'm going to throw it around, but not very much, just a little bit. So have a listen. difficult there I'm just going up and down the scale just throwing it around a little bit and highlighting the area that's got that lovely G sharp it sounds absolutely delicious again just to cover my bases what you could do over this 251 is to work out the chord tones of each chord and practice in that way but again for the purposes of this tutorial I'm not going to do that today I'm just going to focus on the harmonic minor so then the next thing that I would do is to put these two sections together in other words, oops, in other words, just to be really specific, I'm going to put these first eight bars together and I'm going to do that on my app. I'm going to touch here, scroll down and I'm going to do exactly what I did before. So first time round, I'm just going to play root three, five, seven, nine of the A minor and then the D minor. Then I'm just going to play the harmonic minor up and down and second time I'm going to throw it around a little bit but just using exactly the same notes. So let's see how that would sound.
And again, I'm not working mentally, I'm not working super, super hard, but it already sounds like a lovely solo. It sounds so, so nice. So let's look at the next four bars. And again, I'm looking, I'm like a, you need to be like, like a cord detective. Are there any connections here? Are there any patterns that I can see? Can you see a pattern here? It's, it's a, um, the cues are um, something minor seven, followed by something dominant seven, and that is my cue to think that is a major two five one. And uh, that's confirmed because I've got this major scale here, and C is the second note of B flat major, C minor is the second mode, F is the fifth note of B flat major, and this is the fifth mode, so we've got Dorian, Mixolydian, Ionian, this is a classic major two five one. And again, there's loads of ways that I could address this particular structure, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take uh, quite a straightforward approach and I'm gonna uh, play the minor scale, C minor through the C minor and F7, and then I'm just gonna land on the chord tones of B flat major, and that's gonna sound really nice as well. Once again, this is not the only thing that you could do, it's just something that you can do. So um, I am gonna, however, work out the chord tones for C minor and F7 and B flat, because that would be another really smart thing to practice. So the chord tones are C, E flat, G, B flat and D for the C minor and F, A, C, E flat and G for the F7 and B flat, D, F, A and C and that is root three, five, seven, nine of all of those chords. However, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna play C minor through this section here, which is C, D, E flat, F, G, A, B flat, and C. And then I'm gonna land on one of these chord tones, whichever one I feel like. So I'm gonna play that through here. And that is my C minor seven. And again, once again, it's not the only thing that you can do, but it's something really nice that you can do. By the way, <laughs> Just got interrupted by my cat. This is my beautiful cat, Belle. She is the friendliest cat in the world. And I love her with all my heart. Isn't she gorgeous? Say hello to YouTube, Belle. She's, no, I want to go. Sorry about that. Right, so let's see what this sounds like if I loop the bars over here and play my C minor. so simple but it really does sound really really nice so that's what I could do over this major 251 and then really that's it because the last four bars are exactly the same as the second set of four bars where I've got my harmonic minor over all harmonic uh, over all of this which again is a b c d e F, G sharp, and A. 
and that's going to sound really really lovely so now I'm going to put the whole thing together and I'm going to improvise over the entire chord chart just using these really really straightforward simple techniques I think it's going to sound extremely nice so uh, tell me what you think in the comments if you think it's a nice solo by the way even though this is a really straightforward solo if I played this in front of somebody like Dave O'Higgins he might not think uh, that this was the most sophisticated solo that he'd ever heard or I was trying to break any ground but what he would think was this person knows their scales what they're playing sounds absolutely lovely and they're putting their heart and soul into it and all of those things are good things so I wouldn't be worried that my solo is too simple or anything like that if it sounds nice and it works then we're on to a good thing so let's see what the whole form sounds like if I play these ideas. perfectly good solo and if I'm really really comfortable with this and I practice in this way breaking things down into blocks and practicing one thing after another after another putting it together in sections then I can build up my levels of sophistication and I can add things like chromatic scales or I can substitute th ideas for things like altered scales I can substitute playing the harmonic minor for instance I can put an altered scale in there but this is a really 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 good starting point and I suggest that you practice like this so I really hope you found that helpful and please let me know in the comments below uh, if you did and uh, really what I'm trying to do is to stop other people struggling with chord charts in the way that I did so if that's you do let me know because it means the world to me. Thank you for supporting the making of these videos. Thank you for buying me coffees. I really, really appreciate it. I'll see you in the next video. Take care. Bye.